Welcome back to the EP Sports Zone. I'm Abby Hooven, sports editor of the Eastern Progress, and I'm here with my co-host, Zach West. And How are we doing, Abby? I'm doing great. Had a good weekend, and I'm ready for this week. Yeah, you know, we'll get into it. It wasn't the best week for EKU sports, but, you know, that's that's kind of the that's the, the quandary of being a fan, you know. You get really high on the good stuff and really low on the bad stuff, and, you know, uh, let's recap the week. All right, we'll start with baseball. We had an award winner before we even started games. Uh, Kendall Ewell was named the A-Sun Player of the Week for his performances against Jacksonville State. I feel like that was kind of a given. Uh, he played excellent and, you know, very deserving of the award. But we get into the games, and we were supposed to play Dayton on Wednesday. Unfortunately, due to weather, they had to cancel the game. So we just went into our weekend series against Lipscomb, and we struggled a little, which we're not used to, but it, it's – it's interesting to see they lost all three games this weekend, but how will they come back is what I'm mm-hmm. curious. Yeah, it's the first time we've really hit adversity yeah. uh, this point in the season. I think uh, getting the Dayton game canceled kind of threw us out of rhythm a little bit. Uh, you know, those big out of con- – uh, you're supposed to go take a trip uh, to Dayton, you know, big non-conference game, and, and that didn't end up happening. So I think it kind of dislodged them a little bit from their routine, and I think it showed, you know, but – First uh, first weekend series we've lost in a while, uh, so and I think it's our first series loss in the A Sun or second second A Sun loss. So uh, you know it's 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 going to be interesting to see how we fight back. But you know Friday we lost seven uh, two. We got out to an early two zero lead. Uh, Kendall Ewell doubled to score Max Williams, uh, and then Will King singled to bring Ewell in and made it two zero. And then in the second inning, we we threatened again, but just couldn't send the guys home. So, you know, we started the game off about as good as you want um, on a road series, but what happened after that? We just could not get any hits. And it wasn't just we couldn't get hits. We just couldn't even get on base. Uh, We were looking at it in the six of the remaining seven innings in that game, we went three up and three down. And only the sixth inning went past three batters, and it only went to four. So when you're not getting guys on base – it's hard to score, obviously. And then, you know, Lipscomb's on their home turf. They're just nailing them left and right. So, you know, you will finish two for four with a run in RBI. But our pitching also wasn't as consistent as we've seen lately, and I think that hurt the team's offense as well. Yeah, well, I think it was really surprising. You know, uh, our bats didn't really show for this game, at rem- taking away the first and second inning. And then our pitching wasn't there either. And usually we've seen either both are on or we at least get one group on. Defensively, we're good, or offensively, we're good. And, and Friday, we just didn't have either. Uh, so, you know, that that was weird, I would say. Um, Saturday, we lost 6-4. Uh, Logan Thomason, again, we started well. Logan Thomason hit a two-run homer to left center in the top of the first. We led 2-0. We got up 4-1 after Max Williams drew a bases-loaded walk in the fourth, and Thomason scored an error in the fifth inning. So we were up 4-1 on Saturday. But as I'm letting Abby be the bearer of bad news, what happened after we got up 4-1? Yeah, we uh, we gave up a three-run homer um, by Trace Wilhoyt, Georgetown guy, so kind of hurt on that one, but it's fine. Um, tied it up in the bottom of the sixth, and then Lipscomb scored two more in the seventh to take the lead. So we've seen that we're able to keep leads. It's not very often that we've lost a lead Mm -hmm. and then not been able to get it back so that was also something almost out of character and you know we were in good position to keep this win we were in good position but uh, give up three run homer tie it up it's not much you can do there yeah I think it's so this is both losses we've done some really out of character things you know usually we get the lead uh, we keep it Uh, we have the the pitching and and just the bullpen was really weird all weekend, you know, we the depth wasn't there as it normally was. Usually our starters put us in a good enough spot for Will Bryan to close. Uh, but, you know, this, this weekend we struggled to get into the Will Bryan zone. Uh, not Will Bryan. Yes, Will Bryan. Yes, Will Bryan. I'm, I'm off this week. But, yeah, so we get into the – we got we you got to get in the Will Bryan zone, and, and we really yeah. struggled to do that um, this week. You know, Reese Brown was the main pitcher. Uh, he struck out five but gave up five runs in six innings. Like, that's not a bad day of work, you know. Um, he got shellacked a little late, and a, uh, a three-run homer is going to kind of be an albatross in, yeah. your, <laughs> in, your, uh, in your ERA. But, you know, 
if we could have just gotten it one more inning and and let and let Will get in and, and do his thing, uh, you know, I think I think we could have done better Saturday. Like that's an uncharacteristic loss. Thomason, he had one hit and three at bats, walked twice, scored twice. Jalen Jones had a pair of hits, but I think that homer shifted the momentum. Mm-hmm. We never got it back. Couldn't get Will Bryan in to close it. But on Sunday, uh, not a good start. Unlike the first two games, we lost 7-3, to three, but we were down 7-0 heading into the ninth inning. Um, but in the ninth, Kendall Yule hit a solo homer, his sixth of the season. Then our guy Sebastian Greco hit a homer to score Thomason to make it 7-3, but couldn't couldn't come back any more from that. Yeah, it was – it was rough day at the office, rough sledding for for EKU. Uh, we had, I mean, we we walked we walked eleven times. We drew eleven walks, uh, so the bats showed up a little bit more. You know, Jalen Jones and Max Williams both had two, um, but our struggling pitching really was the uh, it was it was the story. So Nico uh, Leontarakis, friend of the pod, came in. He pitched an inning. Uh, and gave up four runs, so not the best day for Nico, but he's a competitor, so expect him to come back firing from that. Uh, I think I, I feel really bad for whoever gets whoever's playing against him when he gets the ball next. Um, Will Bryan came in, pitched an inning, and struck out two, but when you get down 7-0, you don't exactly – Will Bryan's skills don't exactly get to be used. So, you know, it was just – it was a rough weekend. Um, very uncharacteristic. We did a lot of things that the team – hasn't done uh, throughout the season, uh, so it 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 just it was weird watching it. A weird uh, just seeing how we played. And the majority of the innings, you know, three up, three down. We don't we don't see that very often with this team. We at least get one or two here and there. But you know, if our guys didn't on gone base, couldn't get that extra hit to get on board. So we've been on such a hot streak that you know eventually you had to cool off. I just hate that it happened three games in a row. Um, but I think it'll be a good learning point for them, mm-hmm. being able to see, okay, now we've hit a little bit of adversity. How are we going to come back from this instead of just rolling through everybody and not having to get through some of these struggles? Yeah, well, I think it was interesting because we didn't just slow down. We, like, hit a wall, a brick wall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> couldn't couldn't get through it. Like, we pulled the, the parking brake. Uh, no momentum. And I think we were just also really unlucky, too. Like, there was – like sometimes in baseball, stuff just happens, and you're just like, "Nah, really could have gone, could have done without that." And I think what could have gone wrong went wrong uh, this series. So I don't think this is indicative of any like deeper problem or, or deeper through line with the team. I, this isn't like the we don't have seen anything yet. Like uh, take our basketball team for example, where we had some struggles that just shown th- th- through the full year. I think this was just a bad, uh, a, b- a rough weekend, you know. And I think, I think. Uh, Coach Pro will get them locked in, dialed in, and, you know, uh, we'll be ready to go uh, in this next series. So uh, Thursday to Saturday, April 14th to 16th, uh, we're at home against Central Arkansas. They're second in the West Division of the A-Sun. They're only 13-17 and 17 total, but they are 8-4. and four. They just won two of three at Jacksonville State. They're batting 247. So important to note, Jacksonville State may not be – May not be as good as may not be on top like may, people think. May not be as good as previously advertised. Either they're in a rough spot or um, they got it wrong, or the, so the pollsters might have got it wrong. So we might have to reevaluate what it was. EKU taking care of business in, in that series, um, but you know I feel really good about about us against Central Arkansas. I think I think we'll do. I think we'll do well. What do you think? I think one thing about this team is we haven't had many stretches of adversity, but we always come back stronger mm-hmm. from it. So I expect them to have a little bit of like a chip on their shoulder, like yep. wanting to prove at home that, you know, they're not going to be knocked off from their top spot in the West. So I expect them to at least pull out two wins in this. Yeah, I think I'll, I'll get least. back. To, <laughs> yeah, I'll get back to this with one of my predictions. I think, I think this is going to, this is going to go well, but you know, Closing in, closing on baseball, um, player of the week. Who would you say it was in a, in a rough week for EKU baseball? Uh, it, I would have to go, probably with Kendall Ewell. Mm-hmm. Uh, he he helped us get a lead early Friday. Helped us try to make a comeback on Sunday. You know, we didn't really have like a standout guy yeah. like we normally do. 
But he's been consistent all season. He's second in the A Sun in batting average. I mean, you just can't overlook what this guy does day in, day out. Yeah, I think I think we've got to go to Yule solely for the fact that he I mean, no one played up to their snuff over the weekend. Mm-hmm. But, but he was closest to, to playing where he's been at. So I think so I think you give it uh give it to Kendall Yule. You know, Logan Thompson had had a good game in there, uh, so so we'll give him some props too. Not player of the week props, but you know, props for playing well. Uh, give uh, Sebastian uh, Grisho credit because he che- he hasn't played in a while. Checks in, hits a homer. Uh, so I think something that will start to show over the back half of the season is how deep we are as a team. Uh, so props to him. But I think Kendall Kendall gets our uh, gets our player of the week. Heading into softball, we had another award winner on that side. Uh, Carly Robinson was named A-Sun Player of the Week after her stellar series against Stetson. Once again, no no surprise there that she won that award. She was just unusually on on brand for her. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, she, she you, was, you can't play much better than she did yeah, that she weekend. Yeah, she was on something. Uh, you know, moving into the games over, over the weekend, uh, if you think EKU baseball struggled, the women, man, it was rough. Uh, Saturday and Sunday, April 9th and 10th, uh, we played at Jacksonville State. Our first game, we lost 6-0. We're down 3-0 after the first, after Jacksonville State put their first four batters on base. They added three more in the third, which brought the score to 6-0. Uh, we didn't do really anything until the top of the seventh. Um, a pair of hits by Carly Robinson and Viana Barron, but we couldn't push anything across. We had three total hits on the game. Our other hit was a, a, a single in the second inning. That was our other hit. So, you know, we just – we really struggled. Couldn't get anything going. Uh, our pitching wasn't very good. Uh, Jacksonville State uh, really just keyed in on it and, and teed off a little bit. And that translated over into the second game on Saturday. Yeah, we lost the second game 7-0. to zero. Uh, the, the Gamecocks scored seven runs in the bottom of the first yeah. inning and never looked back. And we had one hit on the game. Maggie Purdy had the lone hit. Um, our pitcher, Lauren Narvez, tossed five and two-thirds innings, allowed two runs, struck out one, but that, it was just a it was just a rough weekend. Yeah, you know, I'm going to give Lauren some props for coming in and stopping a run a little bit. You know, Absolutely. Uh, at least, at least stem, I know she let two in, but she didn't come in into the game on, under the best circumstances. There were people on base when, when she checked in. Uh, so... Give her some credit for stepping in there and and just pitching it out. And you know, we had some uh, as we'll see on Sunday. We had some fight, but it was just a tough, tough week, and that showed. So Sunday we lost one zero in heartbreaking fashion. Like you cannot get any closer to winning than we did. Um, in the top of the second, we had a great chance to take the lead. Isabella Gonzalez got things started with a double into right center field. Jeannie Riley followed that with a double off the wall to put runners on second and third with zero people out. After this, Carly Robinson well, after, after after this, Carly Robinson worked a walk to load the bases. So in the second inning, we load the bases, nobody's out. You think we get one out of that, right? We get at least one run. You would we, think. You, you would think. No. We struck out after the walk, and then uh, Jacksonville State turned to double play. And that ended our uh, our EKU threat. Just when you think you yeah. just when you think you've almost got some momentum, yeah, we hit a wall. They, they take it right back. Uh, wait, wait. There's more. Uh, to quote Billy Mays, uh, EKU in the seventh, we had a chance to take the lead. We put two runners on first and second and one out. So you think you might get one here? Just get a hit, advance the runners. No, uh, we struck out and then popped out to end the inning for the Colonels. We got so close to get over the hump, like so agonizingly close to pull a win out and, you know, end the, end the series on a high note. We couldn't quite get there. Uh, to add insult to injury, Jacksonville State walked it off in the bottom of the seventh, not by a home run, not by a triple, double, single, or even a walk. They scored on a wild pitch. They walked it off on a wild That hurts. Pitch. That hurts. That was a – that was – I mean – that says all you need to know about how the how the women's luck was this week. That, ugh, yuck. But on the positive side, Lauren Narvis continued from Saturday, tossed six and two-thirds innings, only allowed one run. 
yeah. on a wild pitch. So our best player gave up the winning <laughs> run. Yeah. But if you think about it, keeping them scoreless yeah. after their six runs, seven runs, that's impressive. She, she played really well. Uh, you know, it's just, man, that's a comedy of errors. And, and I don't think that's indicative of anything on the – on the softball team, we're gonna keep fighting and, and we'll keep playing hard. That's just that's a rough way. That's a rough way to go about it, you know. Um, up next, Wednesday, April thirteenth, we're at home versus Western Kentucky. That'll be a fun game, a good in-state, out-of-conference opponent. Uh, so uh, show up, students. Let's let's get the softball girls a win. And then Friday and Saturday, April fifteenth to sixteenth, we're at home against Central Arkansas. Friday doubleheader, and then Saturday at one. So that's gonna be. That'll be a good series. I think we'll have a chance to to come back and 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 right the ship a little bit. Um, I let's just let's just let's, let's try to get a win there. Let's just get a win, get some confidence back under our feet as we move into the home stretch. Yeah, look, Central Arkansas is twenty two and fifteen. Uh, they're seven and five in conference. Um, they're six and away or six and eight in away games. Mm-hmm. They're thirteen and two at home, so being on our home turf might might help us a little oh, bit it there. Oh, it'll help. It'll help. Uh, you know, as as we know from the basketball team, it you know, if you know if you don't play well on the road, it's I mean that's yeah. that's, that's a problem. Problem. That's a problem. So, <laughs> so I think I think we'll I think we'll be good. Uh, I, I think I think we'll work a winner two out of that. Uh, you know, if you could give a player of the week out for softball, um, who would you be? I know who I would probably be. Lauren Narvez. I think the so. Pitcher. I mean, you don't get any hits. Yeah. And so you got to rely on your pitching a little more. Yeah. I mean, if you pitch five and two-thirds inning relief in a softball game. In, in a seven-inning softball yeah, in, game. In relief, you pitch five and two-thirds. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Lauren, uh, it's tough. It's tough that uh, Wild Pitch scored it. but uh, She did probably the best of a job yeah. you could ask of yes. her. Player, player of the week. Well done, Lauren. Uh, moving into track and field, uh, we had a monster Monster week. Um, there are some, there are some A Sun, uh, A Sun championships implications here with some of the performances, mm-hmm. especially on the women's side. Uh, like, take note of of what we're about to talk about. Uh, but before we get into what happened, um, we got into before we get into what happened this week. Uh, Quintasia Perry was named A Sun Female Trek Athlete of the Week. Um, Madison Fleming was named A Sun Female Freshman of the Week. Um, Quintasia Perry, Christian Scott. Ania Matthews and Madison Fleming won the women's 4x100 four combined to run an ASUN leading time of 45.81. That's the fifth fastest time in EKU history. Perry also won the women's 100 meter at the time of 11.77. And Fleming clocked the time of 14.36 in the 100 meter hurdles. That's third in the ASUN. Our women's sprints are ridiculous. They're, they, I mean, we're going to make some noise at the ASUN, but tell us what happened at the Duke Invitational. We had. Another record-breaking event, uh, Emma Garcia Plencia. She broke the heptathlon record with 5,016 points uh, to finish fourth out of 17. But she broke the previous record of 4,916 points, so she was above it by a considerable amount. And that record was set back in 2016. Yeah, so that's, look for her to extend that record even more. Yeah, that's a huge – That's a huge because uh, that's a competitive heptathlon score. Uh, in the A Sun, I'm I don't have it in front of me, but I'd wager that's a top three A Sun score. I'm I'm pretty sure um, since last I looked, uh, if not top three, it's top five. She that's another place where EKU could get some ground, score some points. Uh, so I think that's that's a huge deal as we move into the A Sun championships. Uh, so look for her to continue to improve that score. That's the that's her. Uh, I think I. That's her first real heptathlon attempt where she went all out and did her seven events that, that she wanted to do. Uh, so I think I think that that's huge. Uh, you also look, uh, Junior Jackson Sadal, he's been on a heater recently. The climb he's been making uh, has been has been really, really good. Uh, he highlighted the men's 1,500 meters, the personal best, 347.85. He is just PRing left and right. Um and it's good to see for him. Uh, he struggled a little bit cross country the last two years. He's been he's dealt with injuries, some some stuff. So seeing him start to shine a little bit, that's huge, especially for his confidence. Um, freshman uh, Jan Badia Selma was right behind him in three forty eight oh three. He's also really starting to uh, to take some steps. Uh, so 
that's really good to see on our on our men's distance. We've got our our two Ahmeds. Uh, they also had stellar performances. The freshman Ahmed, uh, he improved his three thousand meter steeplechase time to nine minutes and eighteen hundredths of a second. That ranks second in the A Sun, top thirty in the NCAA East, and then our. Beloved All American Ahmed Jaziri. Elite. He made his Monster. he made his debut into the college scene for outdoor in the five thousand meters. He finished second with a time of thirteen fifty eight fifty two, which is also second in the A Sun. Yeah, that's a light work time. He just ran it. Th- he just ran it to ran. Uh, yeah. He didn't. That that is not that will not be his PR at the end of the year. He he can, and he's still second in the A Sun. Yeah, he, running he, that. He can go. He can go sub by a little bit. Uh, he just you know just taking this time. Uh, when you're uh, when you're that good, when you are Ahmed's level, all you care about is running your fastest time at the conference championships. So he is going to get slow burned the rest of the season. We're going to be really selective in what he runs in and the events that he does and the miles he puts on his body. Uh, so that's pretty impressive to just come off having done nothing the last few weeks and just put down a casual 1358. Just and, casual. And when I say casual – I mean casual. He was not running hard, so he's gonna he's gonna hit that. Will improve that time, uh, and just look for him to just as he's done in pretty much everything, just add on to his uh, add on to his a sun dominance. And we had we had another male runner. We had Nikodem Jorzak. Nico. He PR'd in the five thousand meters, the time of fourteen fourteen eighty eight, which is sixth in the conference. So another strong performance from a distance that's, guy. That's great to see. Uh, Nico's also d- dealt. He's had the injury bug a little bit. Uh, so it's good to see him step up. You know, we're having a lot of guys shine uh, in our in our men's our men's distance team. So that's good. Everyone's getting to eat, um, which is which is just great. And it's good to see them just improve as a team. Uh, on the women's side, Jones Ableta Larinaga won the five thousand meters with a time of sixteen twenty fifty two. That's the fastest time by a colonel since 2017 and, num- 2017 and number five on EKU's all-time list. That, that's impressive. I she's, mean, you, she, you can't ask for anything better than that. No, she's she's doing her job. Uh, you know, our distance, I just, I can't get over how good our distance team. Like, we are unnaturally good for Like, uh, she beat, I want to say, 51 runners? Mm-hmm. 50, mm-hmm. 51? So. And we're just... Our distance, our distance team, men and women, is so much better than what you would expect, like a mid-major team to be. Uh, so props to the coaches for recruiting uh, men and women yeah. that can that can that can go, and then props to them for really putting the work in because it, it is not fun running seventy miles a day, seventy miles a week. That's that's not fun. Yeah. That's not uh, as a as a uh, below average high school cross country runner in my heyday. And I was running like thirty. That's just not fun. Uh, so, I, so for, I also ran. I understand your yeah, pain. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so they're running seventy, and that's just absurd. Uh, so you know, uh, give them props. Uh, sophomore Anawak Van Gills beat her personal best in the three thousand meter steeple by twenty seconds. Her time of ten thirty four thirty seven currently ranks three in the A Sun. The women's four by one hundred meter relay team finished fifth. Quintasia Berry, Christian Scott, Ania Matthews. And Madison Fleming combined for a season best and a sun leading time of forty five seventy five. So they shaved off a little bit from their run last week, but still, still leads the a sun with that time. Yeah, I mean, that's that's a they that's shaved tough. they shaved a considerable amount of time off. When you think about it from a, a sprint perspective, mm-hmm. uh, half seconds matter. So it's I'm surprised they've still been able to drop it uh, at 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 this point in the season, uh, and I think. I, if they can get it down, if they can get it sub forty five, that's a really competitive time, and and you're talking about really competing with that. Uh, Quintasia Perry just missed victory in the hundred meters. She finished second in the field of forty with a win legal personal best of eleven sixty four. So she again, great performance. Uh, she's so consistent, and and it's it's, I, I don't get how she just does that. Day in, day out. That's really hard to do. Sprinting is very taxing, uh, and and you know she's she's a machine. Alicia Rico uh, ran a personal best time of two eleven fifteen in the eight hundred. Uh, that's also a really solid time. Uh, she'll and she'll continue to improve with that. So that's really good to see. 
Um, and then for the men, Alex Leshen had a personal best time of 150.27 in the 800. Coming into this week, that time ranks number two in the A-Sun. And then Badia Selma clocked a 150.104. That puts him at five. So we are everywhere on the table uh, in our in our uh, runners. So, you know, just I'm excited uh, for us to get into the – into the ASN championship because I really think we could make some noise and probably win it. Yeah, we've got we've got an off week before we get back into it on April twenty second and twenty third at the Virginia Challenge. So we've got a little bit more time to get some more practice in, hone some things that we want to work on, and then head out to Virginia for that. I I expect these similar performances, if not improving on them mm-hmm. in that one. And I think by the time we get to ASN Watch out for this team, not just the distance. We know our distance can can do well, but our sprinters are right up there with them right now. Yeah, definitely. So uh, if we could give a, a track athlete of the week, um, I'll throw my hat in the ring and then you can throw yours in. I've got to get it to Emma Palencia uh, for the heptathlon record. That's so hard to do. Uh, for those of you that don't know, a heptathlon is you do seven events seven track and field events and they score you in the group of heptathlon athletes and then uh they just assign you points based on your seating so she did seven events and she had to do she did that twice she had to do that to qualify for the finals Mm -hmm. and then she had to do it that's so so hard to do so i think emma gets it she's just well done well done with the heptathlon record yeah she she had if you don't know the events 100 meter hurdles high jump shot put 200 meter sprint Long jump, javelin throw, and then run in 800 meters. <laughs> yeah. And if I'm not mistaken, she broke some of her personal bests in like three yeah. or four of those. She was on. <laughs> I mean, on fire. Yeah. I would I would have to agree with you. She's she takes it by a mile. Yeah. Well, think <laughs> well think about the the diver, the diversity there. You know, you're running in 800. So think about the people that run 800 meters. Uh, you know, you think they're like tall, skinny. Uh, you know, look like runners. And then mm-hmm. she also throws a shot put. <laughs> yeah. So if you think about who throws a shot put, usually they're not tall and skinny. So uh, it's amazing the athleticism yep. she has uh, to do that effectively. So congratulations, Emma. You win track athlete of the week. Uh, Abby, you tell us about what happened at women's golf. You know, women's golf listened to the pod on Monday. They they heard they heard my prediction. They were like top four. Nah, we're gonna run away with this win by twenty two shots. Wow. Well, where'd we play? We played at home. Oh, okay. We played at home oh, that, that, at the Colonel Classic there we go. on April 4th and 5th. Uh, after the first day, we led by nine shots. We finished winning by 22. Yeah. We took first place with a total of 878 for 14 over, and we've won six of the last eight Colonel Classics, so props to our team for taking care of business at home. And then Rag and Hilder, Kristen Daughter, won the individual medal with a final score of four under par. She shot rounds of 70, 71, and 71, and she won the individual by two shots. Yeah, you know, what more can you say? That uh, <laughs> They took care of business by and, a stretch yeah, and, and, that's, some. and that's some genius-level strategy to put put this tournament where we did because up next we've got the A-Sun Conference Championship uh, at the Kenderloo Forest Golf Club in Valdosta, Georgia. That's a big deal, uh, you know. So I think we've got we – have, we have our confidence – you ever win a tournament by 22 strokes? I mean, what else can you – what else – I mean, wow. So, uh, you know, look for us to do well at, at the ASUN Conference Championships, uh, especially Rag and Hilder. Like, I think she, she'll be consistent. She'll do her thing. Uh, so, I'm excited to see where we go with that. forgot to mention, she also won the ASUN Golfer of the Week for the fifth time this season. You know, it just seems like every sport we're just racking up the ASUN. We are. We are. Awards the, this week. We are the cream of we the ASUN. We are taking we are. We, care of we, business. We are the elite program. Absolutely. Uh, you know, moving into men's golf, uh, as you know, they don't like the podcast and they don't like, you know, the schedule we have. So that's just, you know, like, come on, guys. Give us give us something to work with. They're playing. They start. Like, they just started. They started when the podcast started. Is when they they started yeah. play at the at the uh, – MU Missouri University Tiger Invitational uh, at the club at Hawth- Missouri at the club at Hawthorne. So, you know, really long name too. So, what the heck, Missouri, just call your golf tournament a tournament and play. Uh, but we'll get back to you when they play and, and we'll see how they did. Uh, you know, top eight is the goal. That's the Zach Weston goal. So, I think they'll get there. So, you know, uh, but we'll see. And then we've got beach volleyball coming up. Uh, we've got 
the regular season finale. They go to the Austin P Beach Tournament on April 15th and 16th. Uh, we play Friday at 1 versus UT Martin, Friday at 5 versus Austin P, and then we play Saturday at 10 against Jacksonville State. And then there's another game thrown in there, but we're not exactly sure what mm-hmm. yet. Uh, it still says TBA, so. Bring it on. Let's go. Bring anybody on. Bring we'll, them on. We'll you, take all comers. You come, we'll play. And we'll play. We'll play, and we'll give, you, we'll give you a heck of a game. So, you know. Yeah, so, if, if we're on the road to a national championship, as Zach tells us. Oh, did you say if? If? When we make no, it. No, we are. <laughs> we, we are. We are on the road. I don't know how long the road is, but we're on it. Well, you've got, well, you've got a Sun tournament after this. And then from there, it'll Choo-choo. decide the national. <laughs> get, again, as I've implored you guys, get on the train. Beach volleyball, I mean, we're... We're chugging along. Yeah, we are. So just get on before it leaves. You know, we, it, it, it will be the dominant EKU program in, in three to 50 years. I, again, I don't know... Three to 50. I don't know how long the, I don't know how long the road is, but, <laughs> but we're on it. So get on it, however long it takes. Um, but yeah, so, you know... Hopefully we're competitive in this tournament to get us ready for the A-Sun Conference Championship. I think we'll make some noise as a punchy underdog when we get into mm-hmm. the championship. So I think, I think you know, let's just let's escape with with our with our confidence intact. So basically, just don't get rolled, just don't get rolled. Because UT Martin's tough, Austin right, P as we've right. seen is tough. Uh, we we took it to the end with Jacksonville State, mm-hmm. so we're gonna really have to battle. Yeah, just but the only thing we cannot do is get rolled. Just Play enough, just win, win at least a set in every game. Yeah, that's what we got. Keep that conference going, and then we'll be great for the conference because we're playing with nothing to lose. Uh, so, so that'll be really good. But I think that about does it for what happened in sports this week. It's time for predictions. Uh, predictions correspondent, how we do? Uh, so coming in the week, Abby was eight and eight and said women's golf would win or get top four. Sorry. So ambitious. she got that, um, and she said Carly Robinson would get three RBIs. <laughs> she unfortunately did not. It's okay. I joined you. I said she would get a home run, and she did not. Tough uh, so I'm sitting at 0-1. But Abby finishes the week at 9-9. and I'll take that. Um, Zach came in at 4-12, and said Kendall Yule would get on base in every game, and he did. Um, but he said baseball would go 3-1 and one on the week. Uh, they went 0-3, unfortunately. So he is oh, now 5-13. and 13. So unfortunate. That's tough. You know, it, you know, so it's unfortunate. I'm not sure which is worse. You know, the the EKU softball team didn't get three RBIs total, so that was that was really off. But then baseball also didn't win a game, so I don't <laughs> I don't know which prediction was more off. Um, what, what do you think, Abby? Who's who's whose prediction missed the mark? You know, more, yours or mine? Based on the run that baseball's been having, yours wasn't too far fetched. Okay. Um. Carly Robinson has been on a tear, though, so yeah. I also didn't think that was too far-fetched. But <laughs> just <laughs> when the whole team struggles, yeah. it's just yeah, it's just, it's just unfortunate. It a- you know, there might be a week coming up where she gets seven RBIs again to make up for it. So yeah. I'll just be waiting around for that. Yeah, it was a, it was a bad week. Uh, you know, just for picks in general, it's, it's fine, though. Uh, so, Abby, what do you got this week? All right, I've got two predictions coming your way. Uh, I think the number two pairing in beach volleyball of Sarah Mitchell and Peyton Walker, they're going to win three of their four matches. Uh, so it doesn't matter who it comes against. They're going to win mm-hmm. three of their four. And then I'll take a page out of my softball book. Hopefully he comes in. Uh, Will King's going to get at least two RBIs. So, Will King, if you're hearing this, hope your bat's hot. Get ready for that. And then that's my two. All right, Derek, you got one? Oh, we're going to win. Here we go. Know. There we go. Uh, I like it. Good work. <laughs> as 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 our friendly reminder, uh, our executive producer and 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 just lord of the podcast, uh, Ryan Gum. He's still over one. He's just sitting there in the corner lurking. Uh, he uh, he has the power to just make predictions over anything. I have a feeling he's making up a list of like fifteen predictions. Yeah. He's just gonna come in at the end and take over all of us. Yeah, he is, and he's just sitting because he's not worried. He's just sitting there biding his time. He's just smirking. Calm. I wish you guys could see him, but you know it's. It's a little ominous, but, you know. So, for, for me and my predictions, you know, men's golf, we'll see how they do. Top eight, guys, come on. Top eight. I'm, I'm really trying to stop the curse. Please do top eight, guys. That's my – I know you guys can't hear me, but top eight. I think baseball will win the weekend series. They'll write the ship. Uh, and then I think women, the team, will go top five 
at the A-Sun Championships. So that's another delayed pick. But, you know, we have to pick on the championships. So, you know, I'll, yeah. say, I'll say women's top five. Uh, but those are my predictions for the week. All right. Well, stay tuned for next week. See, see if Zach's men's golf curse <laughs> continues. <laughs> see if uh, – our softball team writes the ship and gets a win. See if Derek gets on the board. See if Derek gets on the board. See if Ryan comes in <laughs> and makes a prediction. With a prediction. <laughs> I'll predict Ryan makes a prediction. Okay. <laughs> we'll add that on. <laughs> I'll, I'll motivate him a little bit. But I think that that's it. Be sure to check out easternprogress.com for daily content updates. Uh, this week's also First Amendment Week on campus. So we have a list of events. We've got some great Go stuff assemble. coming. Go assemble. Yes, so visit our website for more information. Uh, I'll look forward to seeing you guys there. Um, weather permitting, we'll have a pop-up protest on Wednesday. So assemble. I'm excited about that. Uh, you can protest whatever you want. It could be anything <laughs> big or small, meaningful or not. It, it's whatever is up to you. Uh, you can protest that you love the podcast. You protest that you hate the podcast. That's your right. We'll go we'll for go it. For it. Um, but... Be sure to check out Sports EP on Twitter as well. Keep up to date on scores, news, anything going on. And yeah. Thank you. Thank you.